So we are live on the pre-workup getting ready with Jonathan for uh, the, it's the uh, 204-32 uh, timelines, uh, uh, mail right real estate. It's actually the, the uh, I got to write this out, the real estate show, the uh, real estate agent show. And I'm going to write this out before we go because I usually read it in practice a little bit. But uh, anyway, three parts. We talked about the first part in the breaks. The second part's about you and your life success principles. Then finally, a little commercial about yourself. And then we go on to stay on and open it to YouTube and to questions. Other right. people will come on on the backside. Also, the uh, even though we say the secret real estate agent on the, on the blab, that name can change on the different shows depending on the copyright. Okay. So anyway, things are... We're getting pretty good numbers right now. We have, uh, I don't know if you know what WP Tonic is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's ranked, it was ranked number two for a while and we're on the uh, podcasting on iTunes. Right. In this <laughs> category. So we, we, let me just let my dog out because he's going to bother me. I'll be back. What kind of dog do you have? Yeah, he's a Jack Russell and half Jack oh, Russell, yeah, half yeah. Basset Hound. I don't want that Jack Russell. Now. Yeah. yeah. Go. Hang on for one sec. Monsters, I know. It'll work fine, Jonathan. It worked really well last time. Plus, I'm able to get up. I got yesterday's show up. I'm back. Three o'clock, and it was really good. Came out good. Good numbers. Your color is excellent. What what kind of equipment are you using, John? I'm on my desktop Mac. I mean, I have the giant screen, and I'm just using the camera on there. I have a Logitech, but this actually works better. And what are you using for microphone? Are you using this right here? Yeah, yeah. I don't have a – I'm actually going to get a better mic, but for now, I, I just have this. If you can hear me, okay. Look, yeah, I, I noticed – one thing I noticed right now, do you have the notes on the side, Jonathan? We're doing technical tests now. Are the are – the, is anything on the right side? I you just would, have would, names would, on the right. Okay. I'm going to regenerate because mine aren't showing up, so I'll be right back, and we got to verify before okay. we start, okay? Here we go. Okay. A blabbinism. It works quite well, but yeah, it's occasional cranky moment. Yeah, so he'll read through the questions and stuff, and I'll just pay attention to you guys. It's really easy. Yeah. It's really very, very easy. I've, I've, I've like watched them, and I've, I've done Periscope and stuff, but Periscope is like so fast. I'm always reading the questions. and Yeah. <sighs> so how long have you been an agent, Jonathan? Well, I've, I've been in real estate my whole life, but I've actually only been an agent since April of 2014. I just really? had a really quick uptick because I've been doing the other side my whole life. And I was attorney for 10 years. I mean, I still am an attorney. So there were a lot of things that I knew about it uh, that just made it easier for me to... I've always been technology friendly, which <laughs> which has gotten me where, where I am with my training and everything. Yeah. yeah my background, about 25 years of real estate brokerage, uh, design, build, construction, two subdivisions. Oh, wow. went off the war and sort of shut down the construction side 9-11 that's my wow. background and, yeah. and, and i'm in reno doing something completely different my wife's still a broker but i'm not practicing anymore i'm, I'm doing pure technology work yeah I, i'm very tech friendly <laughs> I, I i was really design bill autocad um we do three-dimensional drawings and show them to people we'd uh, yeah. customize subdivisions oh cool you know i beautiful homes um yeah. i wish i could still do that but you know, I left in 9-11 and I shut down the company and really the capital lines, I can't get the lines back. I need to build the subdivisions. Right, right. And I don't want to do that, work that hard, I don't think, again. Yeah, yeah. But the, it's really hard to get money now. All our money came from local banks for the most part. Uh, oh, other yeah. Wells Fargo. And right. the bank, local banks don't have the lines anymore. Yeah, no, no. It's diff much different. Hey, real fast. I just dropped a link in there. And uh, in the future, if you ever yep. need any help coming on the show, that's uh, yeah, I get my ripping four percent from Amazon, but the ATR twenty one hundred or the uh, Pro Line, uh, excuse me, the two zero zero five. Jonathan's got the two zero zero five. I actually recommend that. That's eighty dollars, but the ATR twenty one hundred has the same guts. Yeah, and that's we, I definitely need that. I need somebody who yeah. knows what they're yeah, that's, <laughs> where they're telling me to go for the first six months of your podcasting career. Stick with that. Don't. In fact, Jonathan, that's all he's using today. I've got um, another a noise gate, which is can actually screw stuff up. I'm playing with light here. So those are places. But you stay on really good today. The biggest problem we have right. with those mics is if it rubs against here, which you have a soft shirt on, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Matches. I'll, I'll be all right. Yeah. But you do sound good. Jonathan, that I think we can get going here. Let me let me just think for a second about you guys talk for a second when I think about your in, intro. Yeah, Bill, it's a Mel Wright real estate agent show. I oh. was I was going to like I did last time. We're evolving. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll do a mail right real estate agent. So let me let me think of something. And you do your timelines, timelines, yeah, okay, and okay. the mail right real estate agent show. 
This is a we own shows together, Jonathan. All right. Tonic, so. Bill's yeah. my beloved co-host on WP Tonic. Yeah. You should see what my taxes look like. I am the <laughs> my partnership. I am expensive it is. I do most of the I do most of the producing for this show and for WP Tonic and Bill co-hosts and does the sound engineering and a bit of but um producing on this show. Great. Well, I'm, again, I, I'm thank, thankful for you guys having me on. And you're also going to be up on Timelines today, and we're doing a new um, – this will actually be up – one of the shows up on YouTube, yeah. uh, on uh, iTunes. On, um, we are going to turn the Mail Riot uh, real estate into a podcast, Jonathan. At okay. the present moment, it's put on YouTube, and I'll put it on my Comp Mail Riot website as part of the blog. Um, I do that in batches of five because I wrote it. I write also extensive notes, yeah. and okay. there will be, there will be link backs to your website. Great, and any, anywhere. I would ask you to email me with anything you want me to plug in the notes and what backlinks you want me to go back. If you can send those to me, yeah, my my when signature I, has them all in there. All right, when I write them, um, I will encapsulate those in into the blog post. But we are going to turn it into a podcast as well. Yeah, this weekend, I think you'll have your feed up, Jonathan. I'll, I'll talk to you afterward. Yeah, sure. We've had thirty right. some odd shows, but this we just one. we're choosing a couple of the older ones that were really good, and the ones that we're doing as a joint show. We got one last week that was quite good, and I'm sure our discussion will be good. So, right. yeah, I've got a network. I do. I put up a daily show on my RSS feed network and it's awesome. really starting to pay off. Hey, um, real fast before you start, what is your background in real estate? I read, I really love your book about decluttering, by the way. Oh, God. It's amazing. That is it's perfect a- for me today. You don't know yeah. what we're going through. We just changed rooms. <laughs> I'm in my daughter's room. And yeah. so we finally committed. We've got four bedrooms, but we've got a, um, I finally got a really better place to do my production from. And I, yeah. Another story too, just background on me. I really, really wanted to three years ago set up a full blown office here in Reno because we moved from Modesto. My w- wife yeah. walked away from a hundred thousand dollars of doing nothing, you know, not having to do anything. Right, right. Because we had two subdivisions. I was vice mayor of the city when the war broke out, so we had no problem wow. generating um, <laughs> leads. Right. We had like 15, 12, 12 listings at any one time. So, yeah, that's it was nice. no brain. So, what, what's let your me, background? Let me just hop off. Just from, I'll be about ten. Give me ten seconds. Jonathan, before you start, I just want to find out what is he's an attorney. He's into it. What is he doing in the real estate technology? Is he doing traditional sales? <laughs> um, well, I can't. We, we're going to have to ask him. You know, I, you know he, he and I presume he, uh, the other okay. question: are, are you still using the smart set? Yeah, yeah, I am. I am. All right, all right. Yeah. Are you still yeah, using I mean, smart? Yeah, I was an attorney for uh, I was a prosecutor for about eight years, and oh, then I like did that. defense work for two years. Mm-hmm. Then I spent about five years in the art world. Uh, I had my own gallery in Florida and New York. Oh, and really? I was a cur- curator at a museum in New Jersey, and you know, you can. We, I, we have another show we're going to probably sponsor. It's out of Laguna Beach, California, all about art. Yeah, I, I, I'm about. always available for that. I taught at Montclair State about art. Also. Oh, really? I've done a lot. <laughs> wow. So what, you're a prosecutor. I like that. I was uh, chairman of public safety of a city, 200,000. Yeah, so I'm, all, I'm, I'm for the good prosecutors. I want, I just, yeah, that's what I'll, That's good. So uh, how long, what are you doing in real estate now? I mean, I'm a residential real estate agent, so I'm working with buyers and sellers, but uh, predominant, I mean, half of the stuff that I do is also training. So I train within all of my offices, which we have 20. Uh, wow. And then I do some outside training, public speaking. I'm trying to grow that stuff now. That's a great combination. I, I love it. It keeps it. I just I don't like to get bored, so I like to do a lot of different stuff. And it, I like uh, you know try to make the industry better, which is a big focus for me. Now let me let me just verify something real fast before you start. Your hometown. I didn't notice your hometown on my. Uh, I am Montclair, my, New Jersey. Oh, Montclair. Yeah, I know Montclair. Yeah. Do I talk for a second while I work on the show notes and. Yep. Sure. I hope we get this puppy. Give me a couple seconds, we'll be ready to go. Yeah. And just get, so you, you'll send me all the links where wherever it's going to appear. So yes. Not this afternoon. You start getting links. Yeah, I sent out a couple for the for the blab. Um, Thank you. On Twitter, well, a lot of people do not know how to use blab yet. You, they <laughs> will. I know. I, I have a know. There's a lot of people who try to click in and then they won't be able to figure it out. Like you, us politicians are some of my clients, and they don't get it yet. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. 
So what's the weather been like in New Jersey, Jonathan? Uh, amazing winter. It's only snowed twice. Um, and mm-hmm. today it's about 20, but uh, I can't complain. With uh, one big snowfall and one small snowfall, that's it. Yeah, we go, I go, um, it's actually, I think it's going to be 64 today. <laughs> in Reno, actually, it's going to, it's, um, we've had a lot of yep. snow, yep. but yesterday and today are going to be, and I think, I think Friday and Saturday are going to be really nice as well. It's oh, too warm. warm. We need, we, it's melting the snow too fast up in the mountains. Oh, we're warm. dipping below, we're dipping negative one on Saturday, so. No, but we've had lots of snow, though. It's been a much better year than the previous years. It's been very dry. Yeah. Dry, drought, really. So you're a New Jersey boy. You, uh... Well, I grew up in Brooklyn, so I'm a New Yorker. New Yorker. Uh, I, oh, Brooklyn, really. I went, sorry, no, I swear, I, did I? <laughs> I've, li- I've lived all over the place. I, I've, I lived in Florida for 14 years. I lived in California for four. Where in California? I lived in North Hollywood. I went to junior high and high school in California before I, then I was in New Jersey, two different colleges. I've been all over the place. <laughs> yeah, Floyd, uh, I think it's a bit, a bit too humid for me. Not, was not for me. I don't know how I lasted so long. I complained about no seasons all the time. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I like too, winter. It'd be too humid for me. I mean, yeah. I'm used to English summers. I know, <laughs> yeah. I know summer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> get four get four continuous sunny days in the yeah. summer you think, God. yeah right um, here's here's how it's going to go is i'm going to read the a short intro for just a technical background and and for how we track stuff and then we're going to go uh I'll, I'll pause for a second i'll just go quiet like this then i'll come back on uh today we have jonathan green they say green right green yep. jonathan green Looks like the color do you have jonathan green on with jonathan dinwood and we've already introduced the MailRite show. Jonathan, take it away. Jonathan will be talking about the more of the technical aspects. And then Jonathan needs to ask you about you and your background, and just like you said before. And then we'll talk. I might interject a little bit. Then as we go to a break, the second half, I'll take over. Uh, just asking about your life and success principles. That's how you get on the timelines feed, which is another okay. feed. And, um, and you have those ones I sent you, right? So you can. Yeah. And then I'll be talking about relationship before sales. A uh, time block for work recover. Um, now the second, let me ask you about that. Uh, time block for work recover. Recover your life. Recover your life. Is yeah, that all it, together? Yeah, yeah. It's basically the principles of time blocking. So if you time block your schedule and put your focus on you know family okay. and stuff first, you'll be able to, you'll be able to. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll just say time block your work, and you can say the recover for yeah. life because I like to keep it short. Uh, yeah. uh, give to get. That's straightforward. An honest answer is always the best answer. Uh, use online to get offline. Oh, I've never heard of that. That's a new one. We'll add some of those too. Uh, yeah. All right. Great. Okay. That's good. Jonathan, here we go. A um, couple seconds of silence. I am not, I may or may not stop the recording today, but just remind me to keep it going. The magic clock here. We have all this high tech and we got a one o'clock like this, which is <laughs> yeah. a timer. So this keeps us within, and if we can keep it at 25 minutes, those are the best length of shows. If I can tuck it with a commercial is about 25. It okay. really is nice, but we stay on Blab afterward and, and YouTube and people will come up in those places. So this wow. is, um, I meant to check too, how many days have you been in Blab? Me, I think it's like 170. 169 days, yeah. yeah. So you've been on it for a while. I, bear, I, I haven't, but I have. I went in when I was doing scoping and then I was on looking at okay. stuff for a while. You're I haven't scoping. been back for a while. Yeah. And I'm ready to, so here we go. A couple seconds right. of silence. Wait a second, I got to fix one. Hold on a second. I, I put the numbers backwards. I was looking at my numbers. Oh, here, okay. Here we go. Welcome to the MailRite Real Estate Show, episode 204-32 on Timelines, live on Blab, Thursday, 11 February, 2016. Today on Timelines, we have Jonathan Green from Mount Clare, New Jersey. And Jonathan's going to tell us all about how he applies some of his life principles and what he's learned to apply to his business in real estate, both in coaching, technology, and developing processes to do well in the new and future of real estate. Break for a second. I can modify that, and I probably will go back and modify that and write it out because I I do post-production. So what I'm going to say now is, so, Jonathan, go ahead and take the show away. Wait, so let me start again. 
Hey, Jonathan, it's, and wait a second. I'm, I'm like off today. I need to write this out. I do so many shows. Okay, Jonathan, take it over. Jonathan's providing us the tech side from, uh, from Go MailRight, and I'm going to provide a little bit of real estate expertise, but Jonathan, take it away. Oh, hi there, Jonathan. I think for this episode, you're going to be Jonathan and I'm going to be John because it's going <laughs> to get it. a bit confusing, isn't it? Um, so you wrote a really great article on um, Ing Ingman uh, about SmartZip and your experiences. So I'd like to go into that a little bit, but also to talk about how you apply it because, because you're very experienced in property, but as an active agent, you've been going for a couple of years, how you use technology and how you use it to build your business up. But can we start with SmartZip? And um, basically, um, you um, gave the impression you like the program, but you're not so keen about some changes that they've put forward recently. So would you like to talk about that? Yeah, sure. I mean, so smart tip for anybody who doesn't know, it's a basically predictive analytics for real estate. Um, it's focused on finding uh, listings, people who are looking to sell their home. And the analytics are phenomenal. It gives you information on people who they determine are most likely to sell in the in the market that you basically uh, that you uh, buy into. And at the time that I bought in, it was an exclusive product all around. So every single person who bought in was buying into an exclusive marketplace you know you map it out and that's your marketplace specifically um and right before the new year before 2016 maybe two days before i was in california and i saw something inside my account that said in 2016 everything's going non-exclusive for new people coming in so you know, for me, it was great. I was going to be able to maintain my exclusivity in my farm area. Uh, but when I looked at it, I felt like because every other part going forward was going to be non-exclusive, that the product just wasn't going to be worth as much to me because everybody coming in uh, could flood their markets with more materials. Um, you know, so I felt like it was going to get watered down. Um, the product stayed the same, but I, you know, I was buying into something that was exclusive all over. Um, and one of the main points from the article was, you know, it is uh, an exclusive part of what is now a non-exclusive product. Is that worth the same? And and I didn't think it was. No, and to be fair to the company, um, it you know, this scenario has happened in other industries with other software, and it. It really depends on how it's handled, um, and um, and also what was said to you. Really, um, do you feel that exclusivity? You know, it's a bit like dating, isn't it, Jonathan? I, the whole well, was you promised an exclusive yeah. relationship, Jonathan, yeah. or was it? You know, we can well, date that, other people. That uh, was in it. I mean, that was really the play on in the article on Inman was you know, what happens when your exclusive partner tells you that they are they don't want to be exclusive, but you still want to be exclusive. So I still wanted to be in an exclusive relationship, which oh. I was in my little, you know, my little tiny box, but everybody else wasn't. And my, my exclusive partner was non-exclusive. They were with as many people as they wanted. So that that's where my frustration was. But, you know, again, I mean, the company took my criticisms well, uh, they changed a few things based on some things that happened. They extended the deadline so people could uh, fix up their farm areas. And they were very responsive. Every person I talked to there, uh, all the way up to the top, because the, the CEO commented on my Inman article, you know, they're, they're great. They're running a company. I have no issue with a company going public. My issue was just that that's not what I signed up for. Yeah. Um, but the truth is I'm still with them because I love the, I love the product and I want to write out my contract and see what I can do with it. Because uh, the truth is at the end of the day for, for real estate, for your return on investment, if it makes me money, it's a good product. Yeah. You know, if it makes me more money than I'm spending times however much, it's a great product for me. And I, I have faith in the product uh, either way. So um, obviously I looked at the product. I haven't tried it out, but um, I looked at it recently because I have my – not at the same price level, not really aimed at what they're really doing, but I have a technology product myself, Jonathan. Right, right. Um, so 
can you give so you know they have a very extensive menu system they offer a lot of extras or extra services at different levels can you give a brief outline of what you see as their core te um, technologies that you like the most and give some rough idea about prices and that do you mind doing that yeah sure i mean i well the, the prices are really dependent on how you can spend whatever you want your 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 spend is how much of a neighborhood you'll get so you'll get certain amount of area that you map out on the map for the amount you want to spend and then inside that is how they use their predictive analytics to really comb through everyone and find out who are your top prospects who are likely to sell so they take into account things like length of time in the home their mortgage and you know a million factors that algorithms they just run through it but they very they present very well and the goal is to present you with the people most likely to sell um, and then through that they deliver marketing materials that are that you can kind of carefully craft within your own product which go from you know, they can go from postcards, handwritten letters uh, that go to them and give them the opportunity to go to a couple websites where they can check their own price. Um, I, I find it great. You know, as a homeowner, I always go on the sites, <laughs> type myself in, see where my value is at. Because the truth is, even if, you know, even if you're not ready to sell as a seller, you always want to know where the market's at and what's your, what your value is at. Because it looks great when you look and your value is a lot higher than when you bought. Oh yeah, that's true. So um, obviously, I don't want to know precise. You know, um, it's confidential. But what do you think is a reason? What is the reasonable budget with them that agent would realistic have to spend to get some results? Do you feel? Uh, I mean, I think with any product, the more you spend, the more likely you are to have success. You know, it's the same thing with Zillow. People say, well, I spent $80 a month on Zillow and I got three leads. I mean, that that's what happens because yeah. there's just not as many impressions available in a neighborhood. So, uh, you know, for me, any product, which includes Smart Tip, is the more you pay, the more likely you are to have success. But the more you pay, also the more expectations you have and they cause you to get angry earlier when you don't. Um, and specifically, not just Smart Tip, any of these real estate technologies, uh, a lot of the issues with the consumer is they expect something to happen overnight and it's not, you know, just because SmartZip provides this fantastic technology doesn't mean I can just sit in my house, you know, and watch TV. I have to go through all the profiles, look up extra information to get phone numbers, and I need to have a detailed follow-up plan to make sure that when I do get a hit from one of my postcards, I know what to do. And yeah. if you don't set up the systems to help yourself uh, react right away, you're going to lose because it, the, the game in any type of real estate technology is response. Your response time is is number one priority by far. So if I get a hit and I don't know what to do right away, which is what happens with a lot of people, then I'm spending my money unwisely no matter how much I'm spending. Yeah, so to recap, what I think you're saying is that it's not a magic wand. It takes work even with the system but the, what what the system provides is better quality leads than you might get from some other systems but you have to do the gardening the um sewing um you have to do you know you get the lead or the it's not a lead really it's in it's a strong indication that that individual household might be interested in your services but then you've got to take over and market to them in an effective and professional way would that oh, yeah. be about right jonathan yeah very much so i mean you anybody can you know get a list of the homes around them or the homes in a neighborhood but this is the analytics that are brought to it to show you in a list of your top 200 who are most likely to sell and i mean you could you could get a contact and call them and they say i'm five years out but somebody smart tip is doing the back work to set you up because i'd much rather call a, a bunch of warm leads like if i have a hundred contacts and 50 out of the contacts have clicked in on one mailing from me ever and 50 haven't my first 50 phone calls are going to the people that have made one step towards me. You know, so this is where it helps. At least I have analytics to say these are the most likely. And then when they click in on something, not only are they, uh, they have back end analytical research to say they're close to ready, they've, they've made a step towards me. So I feel like I'm five steps ahead of just a normal, you know, 
something I could look up on my, on my own. So are there any other, you know, are there any other tools and services that you've utilized in the past couple of years that helped you build up your 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 business, basically, Jonathan? Yeah, I mean, I, I so I'm also a social media technology trainer, time management consultant. So a lot of the stuff that I train is is really kind of basic in the beginning. It's profile management. Like for me, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile that's complete and perfect, you're just tossing money out the door because you could put your name into Google with your agency, anyone can, and LinkedIn will be in the top three every single time. And so for me, when you go with realtors, you could punch half of the realtors in and half of them will come up with their previous career. You know, it'll still say entertainment business or something like that. And that to me, if I'm a consumer, then I think they're either part time or they're, you know, they're not updated. And whether, whether that's true or not, that's what social media is. So I implore everyone, if you're going to use a network, make sure that you're going to use the network. Keep your profile current. Make sure that your profile picture is uh, consistent across all profiles and your bio so that when people are flipping through, they see on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, it's the same picture. Because yeah. we, we know that the, the amount of time that people spend looking at something is, is very limited. So I want as many things that can corroborate myself and give myself social proof all across all the networks. So, you know, you asked, and I think it's really just being consistent across the social networks. And one very important point is if, if you're not going to, if you have, I tell everyone, search all the networks and make sure you don't have a, a profile that's a graveyard there. Because someone will find it and it will be a negative point against you. You know, the Twitter that you created four years ago made one post and never did again. Someone will find it and think that you don't pay attention to your work. Yeah. I mean, it's oh, you make, you, true. I've already loved you, Jonathan. You're saying all oh, the things thanks, that I, I, I preach on a regular basis. Um, so what what's your feeling? So um so are there so I'll go this direction. What about reviews? Because it's another thing that I preach quite a lot. Um, um, what's you? I think we go on to that maybe when we're going to go for a break, Jonathan. And if we get ah. the opportunity, I think we have a quick discussion about the reviews, and then Bill wants to ask you some business questions as well. So we're going to the All breaks, right. folks. All right. Well, thank you, Jonathan Squared. As we go to a break. Okay, we're coming in off the break, and Jonathan's got another question he's got to ask before I go to the timelines questions. Go ahead, Jonathan Denwood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or John Denwood. John, we can all myself. All right, John. All right, um, Jonathan. Um, I just want to ask you a quick question because it's something I preach a lot also is reviews um, because I, I just don't think agents realize that um, – you mustn't manipulate them. A lot of agents go, I found a lot of agents either don't bother really concentrating on reviews on Yelp, Zillio, Facebook, Google, or they go the other extreme and they manipulate them yeah. blatantly, which is really obvious to any millenniums and generation X's. They can smell it a mile away. Um, so what what's your feeling about the importance of reviews not only on these third party sites, but also on your own web properties? And what's the best approach mentally around reviews? Well, I mean, I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, I think they're especially moving into uh, really the time of the millennials, this is what they look at. So anybody out there who doesn't think the reviews are important are nuts, because everybody who's coming to the table is coming on Zillow. That's where they're looking first or realtor.com. And they're looking at the reviews. Um, I think the hardest part for agents is that there's no full system through all of the areas in the world that incorporate all of them. So I have to choose basically, where do I want to ask for a review? And for me, it's Zillow, because I feel like that's where most of the people are. I take the reviews from Zillow and I copy them to my website. And then I take them and add them as recommendations on realtor.com because you can do that. But then the rest is, you know, Am I going to ask all those people for the same review again? And I've tried. I've tried to, you know, cut and paste it and send it to them and say, you can just post this on Facebook. It's your review. Just cut and paste it. But look, people people don't have the time, and I don't I don't want to bother them. I, I will bother them to get one review, and that's going to be on Zillow. And I agree with you. It's you know, 
I, I'm always, uh, you know, I have a history. Of my my first job was as a prosecutor. I'm very like high C uh, compliant. I I want everything to be right. And uh, even with social media, I believe in like social media etiquette. I, I agree with you 100. percent You know, when somebody has like 250 reviews and they only have 20 transactions, there's something wrong. Yeah. You know, and yeah. and I don't need my friends to go give me reviews. I, I I can do enough business by working hard to get the real reviews myself. Oh, thanks for that, Jonathan. So um, my co-host Bill here has got some really great questions for you as well, Jonathan. Great. Well, Jonathan, we only have five to seven minutes in this section to go through your time and life success principles, but I'm going to go jump ahead of here because it, it relates to me today. You have your book. Your favorite book is Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. I've never heard oh, of that yeah. before, but I, I read a little bit about it this morning and listened to it on Amazon. By the way, that'll be on show notes at timelinesofsuccess.com, that book. So we can get a ripping 4% from Amazon. <laughs> but I, I listened to it and it's like perfect for today because I, I came from a uh, you know, from having a corporate office, uh, construction, real estate, a nice custom home in California to like a different environment in Reno, Nevada. So I'm in a four bedroom rental house, about 2000 feet. And I, I'm, I've got to declutter more. Yeah. And I'm gonna, if you've noticed, <laughs> I'm going to bed for you. I mean, uh, we still have the nice place out in California, but we've, it's definitely a different lifestyle that we've moved into my wife and I. Yeah, um, and the, and the, the funny story is I, I was, uh, I was at a broker's open house, you know, looking at houses for buyers. And I saw this book on the side at the night table. And I was like, what is this life changing magic of tidying up? That, that sounds amazing. Cause I, I always want to declutter. Uh, and I, I mean, I'm an organizational freak, but when you read this book, you realize that I realize that I'm not, um, I mean, the general principle of the whole book can be summed up by Marie Kondo saying, take everything that you own, put it in your hand and say, does this bring me joy? And if it doesn't throw it out, because we just keep too much stuff and there's ways of, there's a whole system. So for me, I'm a systems person. I just want a diagram of how to do it. So it says, you know, take all of your clothes and put them all in one room, get them from every room in your whole house and put them all in one room and then go through them using that. And then you're done with your clothes, you know, and then they, they have a whole hierarchy of how it works. And, uh, you know, I, I read it and it's really overwhelming to think of how to do it because it's really like a six month process. Uh, but once you start doing that and, and use a couple other uh, books that I've read, you know, you just streamline your life and and make sure that you have more time for your family and your friends by not well, having stuff everywhere. For the listener out there, you can use your imagination or you can come over and watch the YouTube on Timelines and on WP on, on uh, MailRite. Uh, off to the right behind us, you see it's got like 100,000 color copies. That's my industrial strength printer for my construction company. Still back there in the corner. It's probably... <laughs> It's, I think it's around 9-11. I can't remember exactly, but it still works. Use these big cartridges. I have a basement a full of old printers. I got to get rid of them. See, you just said it. You got the, uh, and, and we had an exchange server. Uh, 2003 was the last time it was upgraded. And it's still out in my garage. So yeah, it's, it's painful. <laughs> it won't be once they're gone. Yeah, I need to get rid of them. That's exchange server is so expensive and took so many hours to get going. But I know the world has changed. We're on the cloud. So let's let's get into your life and success principles. Now, okay, sure. this is the fun part for me. The first one is relationship before sales. What does that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, that's really my tagline in real estate, and I believe it in life. You know, I I, I mean, I was kind of always an, an, an more of an introvert, but going into real estate, it, I believe in the relationship. You know, in my previous careers, that was always relationship first, and this is no different. I think that, you know, too many real estate agents are, are rightfully hungry for the money. But when the money is put ahead of your client's needs, you know, you, you're, not, you're not doing your job. Your fiduciary duty is gone and you're not helping your clients get where they want. So, I, I mean, I'll show people 80 homes, you know, I, if, that's, if they're still interacting with me and they're still trying and they're making offers and losing, like we're, we're doing business together. Uh, and I value the relationships. I want to, you know, I end up being friends with pretty much every one of my clients. Uh, and afterwards, you know, I know their kids' names and I want to I want to help them uh, from there on out. And I don't think like, oh, I wonder if they're going to send me 10 referrals. I mean, I, I hope they do. But if they don't, I'm I'm you know, I'm happy to help them out, you know, find them people that that, that can help them with their new house and and just, you know, remain a part of their life. And that, that's how it is through the process. So that's what my tagline has been. And I, I believe it and, and I act on it every day. No, I don't have time to go into detail now, but when we finish the podcast, 
on YouTube. We'll go into more detail. I have questions to ask you about your transition because you've moved and gone between professions. I just want to yeah. say how you got up and running so fast with that with those concepts because it takes time for people to know, like, and trust you. Those relationships. We've been in real estate for twenty five years. We're going to ask that on the on the after the show. Great. So next principle is time block for work. Yep. I mean, I, I, I have a training called Time Block for Work, uh, Recover Your Life. And it's basically a principle of just uh, time blocking your life, which includes everything. Because you know, if you're, uh, you're busy, like for me, I've got two kids and I'll put my, the first thing I put on my schedule is all of my kids after school activities, all of their uh, everything recitals, everything for the whole year. So it makes sure when somebody asks me, you know, can you do a showing here that I'm blocking out the things that are most important to me which is, are my kids. Um, and once I have a whole schedule, some people think it's crazy to look at a schedule of all these personal things and time with friends, but I'll pre-book times to do showings so that when somebody asks, I can say, well, I have time to show and I have a block already set up. So I literally block everything um, and it just helps me stay very, very organized and it helps me pay attention to my priorities. And I think that's the way you recover your life because you know, as real estate agents, you get going and going, and then it's like you, you can't get back to where you were because there's so much business. But if you always stayed with a model that just kept a schedule and you stuck to it and you stuck to it to help yourself prospect and do these things, you're, you're not going to lose anything. And you know, when you have eight o'clock to nine o'clock one on one time with this child, that you're going to keep that because it's in your schedule. You're not going to schedule anything over it. If you don't write down those family things, you'll just not think of it at the time and you get a hot lead come in and you say, oh, yeah, sure, I can do a showing. And then I'd, I'd rather miss the showing and have a, an excited child than have a disappointed child and make one showing. You know, my, my wife always time blocks for her family, for our kids, always, always, yeah. always does that. And she'll tell a client that I have an appointment and the appointment's with our, you know, 14-year-old daughter or 15-year-old daughter. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's a lot of my appointments. Yep, yep. I, we totally understand where you're coming from there. And you have to do it when you're professional because you can go 24-7 in real estate or in any type of sales. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very good. So give to get is your third principle. Yeah, I mean, it's something that I, you know, I heard first from Katie Lance, who's a great uh, social media technology person. Uh, and it was about LinkedIn. It was really in terms of recommendations, give one to get one. But I really believe in it for everything. You know, if you're not a giver, you know, you're not going to get anything back. You know, for me personally, in my real estate career, I work with two charitable organizations. One's called Give Back Homes and one is New Story Charity. And they build homes for people uh, who can't have homes all over the world. And part of the uh, my closing proceeds get donated automatically. And of course, it's a, it's, it is part of my marketing, but I believe in them. And I believe like if I'm giving out that, then things will come back to me. I mean, it's just general principles. And when it comes to working with other people, you always have to give first. You know, if you're an agent and you're not giving value, you're not going to get back the, the things that you want from other people. You know, we could go into politics, but that's called a free market system, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It really, it really does work. So on number four is an honest answer is always the best answer. Oh, yeah. I think I've, I've always been accused of being too honest, and I don't think that's possible. Um, like, for me, I'd rather somebody just tell me straight out, like, I don't want to work with you instead of having me try to follow up for six emails and seven phone calls and them avoid me. Like, just send me back the email that says, you know, I'm working with another realtor. No problem. You know, I'll take you off my list. Um, but I so I'm just straightforward. I talk people out of homes that I know you know, they get really ramped up about it. And then there's something that's that's very wrong with it, like an underground oil tank, and they just love it. And I have to explain, you can't get this house, you know, I can't make a decision for you. But these are all of the things that could potentially go wrong. And that, you know, in the long run, they always appreciate that. Because uh, I don't I don't want the quick buck, like we said, for relationships before sales, it's just about, you know, honesty is tough sometimes, but you, uh, you have to just, it's, it takes a lot quicker uh, time just to tell somebody the truth and to beat around the bush for five minutes. Well, Jonathan, after the show today and the YouTube portion, which will still be live and recorded, remind me to ask you about some of the uh, Napoleon Hill books, because I've got some mixed feelings on those sale sales techniques. So remind me to ask you about those. And finally, your last point is use online to get offline. That, that, that's interesting. Online to offline. 
Yeah, I mean, we're in a technology friendly time of the world. And in real estate, you know, we're all using technology to help us with our leads. But the whole point behind all of this technology is I'm not making deals from sitting here on the computer. I need to use the technology to get in touch with people the right way, you know, using social networking etiquette. And then I need to get it offline. So as much time as I spend online, which is a lot with all the social media that I do, it, it doesn't make any difference unless I'm converting that into meetings and appointments and talking to people and going back to number one, relationships before sales. You know, you can't have a relationship, the real relationship until you get offline. You know, a tremendous amount of information, what you just put in, because Jonathan and I talk about this. Jonathan is from the tech side. I'm from the real estate side. We sort of blent over the last couple of years. And I think he understands so much more. And I'm trying to understand more about, I've always been in tech because of design, build, construction, but different kind of tech. Yeah. Hey, with that, we're going to go to a break. Jonathan Denwood is going to come back and you're going to give your commercial about how we can get a hold of you, how the listener can get a hold of you. And you also uh, give talks and speeches, but I think you're a national for that, for real estate agents across the country, FYI, because we interview a lot of folks. So, and I, and Jonathan knows that I normally don't say what I just said. And we'll talk about that after the show too. So with that, let's go to a break. All right, Jonathan, we're coming back off the break, and this is time for you and your commercial. First of all, how does a listener get a hold of you? And then what's That's your commercial? Jonathan. Me? Yeah. Or that, Jonathan? Let's go, let me start again. We're going to do a pause. <laughs> so this is for you. I'll, I'll see. Jonathan Green, we're coming back off the break, and this is your time. First, we want to know, how does a listener get a hold of you? And then what's your commercial? What's your service? you can provide the listener? Oh, well, I mean, I'm a residential real estate agent. I'm obviously into real estate training technology, but you can find me on Twitter at Realtor Green, and green has an E at the end, green with the color with an E at the end. Uh, and you can find my website is bhhsnj.com slash jonathan.green. And I mean, it's a social media world. You can just type my name and Berkshire Hathaway into the Google. You'll find 50 social media sites uh, and you, hopefully you go back and read that article on Inman. If you look up Inman and type in SmartSip in the top, you'll see the article. Um, and I really appreciate you guys having me on here today. Jonathan right. Dinwood, take it away. Yes. Um, so I've got one more last question. Um, what technology service, whatever, what technology fin that was taken, if it was taken away from you in the next hour, do you think you would miss the most? Jonathan. Well, I, I would. I wish I could say I wouldn't miss any of them, uh, but for my business, it would be my phone because uh, everything goes through there. And I actually, I do most of my work on a desktop, which I find too many people are doing work on the phone. For me, the phone, because of texting, has just changed the way I do business. Um, I don't. I can not always available to talk on the phone. I mean, that could be at an office meeting, but I can always text. So. I can really handle five streams of business while I'm doing something else. Uh, and the truth is 90% of the people now about are coming in, looking on sites like Zillow and realtor.com on mobile. So when I get a, a mobile lead, I'm just texting them back because I know they're on their phone. So I know they're going to see that if they ignore me they ignore me, but I'll know right away. That's great. Um, so, um, I think it's been a great discussion, Jonathan. We've covered some interesting um, topics. Do you think there's anything I should have asked you that we haven't? Anything? No, to no I mean, I think it was fantastic. I appreciate the opportunity. I, I love getting the information out there. Um, and it's, uh, I'm sure I, we could probably go on for about five hours. But so. you know what? We don't, we don't, we don't go for five hours. <laughs> we can have a little we can have a bit of a discussion. V8, five hours. Well, Bill can keep on for five yeah. hours. Yeah. Hey, hey, all our Blab friends and all our YouTube folks, all those listening on on timelines on and, and mail, right, on the podcast, go ahead and go over to the mail so, we, websites, which is timelinesofsuccess.com and also mail-right.com. Go over to those sites, and you can listen to the YouTube. We're going to continue on on YouTube and on Blab. It'll be recorded. For the next uh, however long Jonathan can uh, Jonathan Green can stay with us, at least 30 minutes, I hope. We'll okay. open up to our blob audience to ask, ask questions. And you can see it's like Friday. Is it feels like Friday, but it's Thursday. So I'm all off here today. Anyway, 
Thank you, everybody. We don't have the music on today, but the music will be post-production on 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 the show. No, no, Jonathan, I've got a new mixer coming, so I just didn't. Oh, no music. See, you had no music. So I like the music. I like the music. You, you, keep, <laughs> you keep doing that, Bill. Yeah, you keep doing that, Bill. That looks, that looks really fantastic, Bill. I, I'll, I'll look at the mixer yeah. so he can, Jonathan can yeah, hear what the looks... mixer sounds like. Okay, that quiet for a second. Okay, we're all finished up for the uh, pot. To me, the, when we create, that's all edited, and it sounds actually pretty good when I stitch it and edit it. And I'll be doing that right away after here. But I've got a ton of questions to ask you. Jonathan, first of all, how, how long have you been in real estate now, you say? Three years? April of 2014. Okay. So, three years? <laughs> Tell me how you got started. And, and how long did you live where you live in New Jersey? Um, uh, I've been in New Jersey for five years. So you're relatively near the area. What did you do yeah. before real estate, right before real estate? Uh, right before real estate, I was teaching at, uh, in a, I was the advisor for a master's museum management program at Montclair State, which is right yeah. here in Montclair. Um, before that, I was a curator at the Hunter and Art Museum in uh, Clinton, New Jersey. Yeah. Can I ask a quick question, Bill? Hey, Jonathan, um, your first year, you know, obviously you've, right been, back. You've, yeah, you've, you've, you've been involved in property quite a while. But your first year, what do you think some of the main things you learned in that first year Oof, that helped yeah. you move it on? Um, consistency uh, and branding. You know, I feel like I'm always branding myself, you know, just by keeping, like I said, you know, during the blab, my, you know, my picture is the same across my networks. And uh, I mean, generally, I, I think most people would describe me, especially my friends, as one of the most laid back people on earth, like nothing rattles me at all. Um, and, and I think that really helps me. You know, I, I just, you know, I, again, I, I, my first job was as a prosecutor. So it's not like, you know, me going out on a real estate deal, uh, instead of, you know, putting someone in prison, or when I was a criminal defense attorney, you know, doing trials, it, you know, I, it, it's, it's, it's very important business for people to buy a home, but nobody is going to prison. So, <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, it's, uh, I, I love looking at homes. So I think if you, you know, if you're not stressing about the end result and you're taking care of your clients, you're building relationships. Uh, that's, I think the most important things that I learned. I mean, other than technical things, you know, we all make screw ups along the way and there's always a way again, like we were saying before, an honest fix you know if i make an error on something i'm just going to call someone and say I, I that was my fault you know i messed that up and then that'll take a lot more time than me trying to you know figure it out and come up with a way uh to say that i didn't do it when i when i did yeah um to quickly comment and then ask you another question hopefully bill's coming back i hope, hope that I'm <laughs> you like that. Uh, <laughs> um i think you, what you've said is really important you know your client's going to be a bit stressed out um, because they're buying or selling a property they don't need an agent that adds to the drama really no, do they yeah, they, no, want, they, they need point. somebody that the opposite makes you know has got a business head about it not actually uh, makes the situation a volatile can be a volatile situation even oh, more yeah. yeah no that's a they? great point um the second thing your observation over the past couple of years, what do, what are some of the key things that you regularly see agents doing wrong? Do you see a pattern in things uh, that they do wrong? Yeah, I mean, right now I see, so yeah, this is, a, I mean, I'm glad you brought it up. So one of the things that I'm like diametrically opposed to is cold calling. I was just reading something this morning on it. Like for me, if I'm I'm at home, I don't even know my home phone number and my phone rings all day. You know, I never answer it because I don't like to get cold called. So for me, I understand that cold calling was really an, an old school real estate principle. And there's parts of it that can work well. But, but the thing that I do is I use technology to get someone to take one step towards me. And then that's a warm call. So even if I've never met them, if they've already either looked at my website or used one of these materials from SmartSip that I sent out, or they send me something on Zillow, they, they're already one step towards me. And that's the leads that I like. I'm not going to pick up the phone and call someone who I have no data on. And it doesn't make sense for me to use systems to find people's phone numbers that don't want me to find them. Like, it's just invasive to me. Um, so I, I may be against the grain, but I, I'm still going with it. And I especially believe that with the way, you know, millennial culture is, they a lot of them don't even have home phones. So, you know, I, I don't, it, 
it just seems silly. Like I can't answer my phone at home after five o'clock. I'm busy with my kids. And again, like I said, I don't even know the phone number. So I, I never answer it because I don't know who's calling me. So what about open houses? When you started, um, did you do any open houses or did you avoid that as well? No, I did as many as I could. You know, I, I, I think that uh, when you're new and, you know, you, you don't have a background to say when you're going up against other agents who have a history, transactions, you know, you just have to get your name out there and talk to people. And I think that makes it easier to do everything. So when I first started, I was taking as many open houses as they could give out, you know. And I think for agents, it's not just sitting and waiting for them to fall in your lap. If you work for a big company, you see an open house out there and maybe they already did the open house. But if it's still on the market, you can go to the agent and say, look, do you mind if I do an open house? You know, and why wouldn't they want another open house? Ask their clients if they want to do it. I mean, realistically, if you work for any size company, you could do an open house whenever you want. And it's a great way to get the conversation going that you're going to have with your future clients without really any pressure because it's just a lot of people looking anyway, a lot of people yeah. with agents. Um, the um, the other thing I would say to you, and I kind of preach this because it's a, it, I say it's a person-person business. I think there's two aspects to this. I just want to see if you agree, Jonathan. There's the person-person, you know, being out, meeting people, um, not being the secret agent, building relationships, and then building up a database you got to have a database and you got to do you got to do something with that database um would you agree with that a hundred percent i mean you you can't succeed really in any sales business if you're not building on your database and if you're not going in and working with your database i think that's the thing that people forget i can collect as many leads as i want but if i don't go in and vet them myself you know look them up and, and corroborate some of the activity, then again, I'll be wasting my time on leads that that don't want to talk to me. You know, if I do the research, I'm going to be focused on the leads that are a little bit more vetted that I can work with. Um, and go ahead. Yeah, I think that's um, really good. But I think we, we've kind of done a full circle because you're, you're going to be working in the near future with Curator because you become really quite busy. So I, I think... I, um, I'm being amazed at the amount of agents that don't build a database. And then there's some agents that are more effective that are building it, but they get into what I call the kind of circle of eight. They get busy, so the mining, the touching of that database gets cut off. Yeah. Then, then they go into a quiet period, and then it's all about, you know, frantic activity of getting qualities then it turns back and then they get too busy again so they get into this circle of eight as i call it yeah. have you got any um and i think it is you know i think it is quite difficult to handle that has that been the same for you in some ways yeah i mean i think you know when when it gets busy you have a lot of stuff coming in and you really have to start to uh, comb through your database and vet it for yourself to see which leads are better and, you know, that's why uh, for me, I I just got too busy to handle it on my own. I haven't built a team. I don't have an admin. So I'm the one in my Zillow. Um, and that's why, like I said, you know, I went to a company like Curator to get going because I need to put everything in one spot and I need it to be handled. And I'm not I'm not big on automation, but I am big on something that will give responses so that and then when I get a response from that, then I really know I'm, I'm ahead of a warm lead. And I, I can't do it. I mean, I'm getting leads in the middle of the night, you know, two in the morning. And I know when they get something back that says, you know, can you talk? They'll know that it's it's automated, but it's 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 a way of making sure that I'm following up. And the one thing that can't be missing is the personal touch. You know, you can't rely on just drip campaigns and just email or just texting. You have to pick up the phone. And like we said before, you have to get offline. You're never going to win if you don't get offline and off your phone. No, I, I think I think it's a mixture of keeping yourself in front of your biggest referral, which are people that I call it, if they can recognize your face, they're somebody that had done something, they're, they're either somebody's heard about you or you've spoken to them. If they can recognize you, 
they're, they're a person that maybe should be in your database and you've got to be touching those people in a non-abrasive way and you've got to treat people like that in a different way to people that are directly in the market right now and there's just a different strategies and different but getting a referral is always going to be better than even a, a even at somebody that's interested in the market that's gone to one of your web properties and done that first step, as you said, a, a, a referral from somebody that knows you, trusts you, has done some business, uh, knows something about you, is always going to be more powerful. Would you agree with that, Jonathan? Yeah, 100%. I, I mean, I think that those are the contacts that are, are warm and become close. Those aren't the contacts that are going on the drip campaigns. I, I only use drip campaigns for, to try to resuscitate online leads that are possibly dead because online leads they could be 18 to 24 months out so i don't feel like i i don't want to be invasive to anyone i don't want to bother anyone you know they can always opt out but when i'm thinking of drip campaigns once i get a response i take them off a drip campaign right away because we're in all it is is to to see when they're going to respond and if they are and if not you know i don't mind sending the email uh saying do you want to stay on the list would you like to unsubscribe i'll be aggressive and send a video like if you want to opt out, just reply to this and tell me opt out. I'll take you off of all of my systems because the truth is I don't need a hundred extra people in my database who don't want to talk to me, but I, they never told me like we were saying before with the relationships. I'd rather everybody just say never contact me again like that. Thank you. That will prevent me from bothering anyone. I don't want to. It's nothing worse than chasing a date that's not really <laughs> interested, is there? But, terrible. Go on, Bill. Got any questions, Bill? I've got, yeah, I'm yeah I, I, I ran out. I had to have my coffee. Um, I, Jonathan knows me. Sometimes I don't get enough sleep. That's one of my negative points. But I'm, I'm actually feeling pretty good today. So here's here's a couple of questions I have. Um, getting started, sort of back where I was, I, I really like, and you've got such a eclectic background. You're like me. You're very eclectic. and We're different ways eclectic. I don't like to get uh, bored. <laughs> I mean, I was... Uh, I like the performing arts. I know you like the arts of all types. Absolutely. Uh, visual. It sounds like you're more visual arts, right? I mean, I, I like them all. I mean, and I'm open to them all. I think as I got older and I, I just started to appreciate kind of everything more. Yeah. You know, I've liked them since I was a young kid. Uh, yeah. My family has been into art. I mean, it's a we, we interesting background. Now, you said you were in South Hollywood. There's a lot of connectivity. You've moved around. You're a prosecutor. We were a prosecutor right out of school. Yeah, I, yeah, I went. I went to college. Went right to law school in Florida, and then I, I started as a prosecutor in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, uh, down! Wow, that's kind of cool. Yeah, we we were busy. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Lauderdale. <laughs> I did. I worked for the DEA. Uh, I was assigned as a. I was nine years on active duty, and one of my last assignments, I was assigned over to their air wing as a pilot on a wow. special mission. Yeah. And um, I I can tell you a chain of custody and some of the stuff we did, and I can tell you all about different, you know. Title 15, Title 10, DEA, yeah. FBI, all that I mean, stuff. I, I, I came very close to going back to law school after nine years of military. I mean, it was like 50-50. And I went into construction management and built houses and subdivisions and stuff like that. But that's one of the things, you know, can't do everything. So hats no, off to you. I, 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 uh, I mean, I think any of our prior careers, like we said, are things that, that just make you better in your current job. I've definitely moved around, but you know, I used to negotiate pretty much 10 hours a day. So negotiating a real estate deal is not, is nothing to me. And it doesn't mean that I'm a hard liner. I was as a prosecutor and as a defense attorney, when it comes to real estate, again, it's a relationship. You know, you, you can't be so hard line that you ruin the deal for your client. You have to have the relationship with the other agent to make sure that you're, you're getting the best deal. And sometimes that means your client doesn't think you're being hard enough, but you're making sure that you're going to get the deal done for them. So I assume you're a county prosecutor down there. I was a state prosecutor. Oh, state. I really in- started the state. That's even cooler. It's it's the same. I mean, I was okay. I was in Broward County, but I worked for the state of Florida. Okay, that's how they, it's run. A little bit different. Every state's slightly different, I assume. Right. But uh, yeah, congr- how long did you do, did you do that? Uh, I was probably almost seven years total. I went from Fort Lauderdale to Sarasota, and then in Sarasota, I opened a criminal defense practice. Did that for two years before I got into the art world. Really? So you, as an attorney, you're sort of representing them in the art world. Tell us a little bit more about your art world background. How does that bring? Yeah. So I just transitioned out of it. I, I was kind of, my kids were little and I was, I just, I didn't want to be doing criminal work on either side and bringing that negativity home. It was just too much for me. Yeah. Um, so 
at the time, uh, got into uh, this building in an artist colony in Sarasota um, and started off as a half boutique, half art alley. I can tell you honestly, I had, didn't have a, a clue what I was doing, but it was so much fun. And I got so obsessed with artists and art uh, that it grew into just a regular gallery. And then that gallery moved into a couple spaces in Sarasota. And then that gallery eventually moved to New York City on the Lower East Side for one year. I just happened to pick 2008 as the year of the move. So yeah, right as I was doing construction on my space on Clinton Street, uh, right across from Clinton Street Baking Company, the market was crashing. So oh, that I, sounds was, painful. That sounds really, 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 <laughs> really, really painful. It was, uh, it was a really long year, but it was a, it was a lot of fun. And, well, um, you know, I just, I, visual arts are amazing in all ways. I, I, I uh, the art world in itself is I'm not a fan of, but I love art. What kind of art do you like? I love contemporary, every kind, painting, drawing, video, photography, sculpture, uh, anything that makes me react, uh, I can have a visceral reaction to, I love. And that's that's the best thing about art. You could bring five people in to look at, see what you got going there. You can bring five people in and look at, at, at the same piece. They'll have a visceral, different visceral reaction to it every time. This is my uh, 13 year old daughter's bedroom, but those pictures up there are left over. She drove those probably between 10 and 12. That's some of her stuff. So we're, we're big that we do. Yeah. I got 10 well, boxes of my kids' stuff. <laughs> we still, you see the, see the little uh, ukulele all painted up and everything. Everything's painted yeah. in here. And her room is multicolor over the next, next room over. Yeah. But uh, that's really good. It's good to know. So you, you came into real estate. This is where we get going. You're you, out of New York. You did a transition. What did you do between um, the art gallery and what you're doing today? Because there's a gap there. Yeah, I, I worked. Uh, I worked, and when I lived in Brooklyn, I worked for a company called Collectrium, which is a is an art technology hybrid uh, that mm, was at the time focused on collection management, but then kind of morphed uh, into uh, an iPhone app that you use at art fairs that will help you guide you through the fair. And they're still active. It's a great company. Um, right I started. Yeah. I, then I, uh, I was teaching at Montclair State and was the advisor to their museum management program for three years. I taught in the undergraduate and graduate, a few different art classes. I taught an art and law class, which was great because I combined my uh, two histories. And then I decided to get into real estate and probably five seconds after I decided and was excited about it, my sister called me and she said, why didn't you do this 10 years ago? You're going to do, do great at this. And I said, I just wouldn't have been ready. Like the time wasn't right. And I just happened to pick the right time. And uh, I realized that all the stuff, growing up, I, I went everywhere with my dad on the weekends. To, he was flipping houses, doing all this real estate stuff. And I think sometimes later you just grow up and you don't realize all the things you learn until you're doing it. And yep. when I was doing it, I was like, wow. You know, my sister and I always talk about it. And we're like, that, these are things that our dad would have done. Uh, he would have done it cheaper than we do. it. <laughs> I had, oh, Jonathan, one thing. I had a design build construction war came along. I stay as a reservist. I was a pilot. And I was also a civil engineer for the Air National Guard. And when the war broke out, I was activated that day. So that was sort of the end of our design build construction. Right. But what we did was when I'd come back, I just helped my wife with real estate. And I realized, gosh, I'm making so much more money now just focusing in on real estate and not build, which I love to design and build stuff. But that was such a rat race, you know, as such the hours were here. I have seven o'clock in the morning. I'm on the job site yeah, Often yeah. until two o'clock in the morning. I'm doing my backside design engineering, you know, at night when it's quiet and I'm, I'm taking a nap yeah. like at three o'clock because I was just running ragged. Plus I was vice mayor of a city of 200,000. Yeah, sounds busy. <laughs> I mean, and, and chairman of public safety. I love chairman of public safety. That, but everything I did that that time frame in my life, I loved being chairman of public safety. I like being around the police officers. Yeah. And, and I had a dep we had a deputy city manager who was a former um, uh, a chief of police down in Florida somewhere who'd come up and worked for us, worked with me. And that was my favorite thing to do. But that said, I, when I got back out, I realized if I focused into real estate, we made a lot of money. Now, I went, unfortunately, I was activated again. Well, fortunately, unfortunately, whatever. And I decided to finish up my active duty. So in 2008, when you were doing that gallery, I was in Afghanistan that year. Oh. Yeah. So anyway, um, I, I want to talk about this transitioning out. You you got a fast start. How did what were your first six months like in real estate? I, I Jonathan may have asked you that, but what did you do to really get up and running? What we used to do, what I found out, made a lot of money. We had the inside spread of the Realtor Magazine, both sides. We had a small real estate office, which used to be nineteen. I traded it down to about twelve, 
Mm -hmm. I broke them into three teams. I used an exchange server. I, I signed them. We were doing stuff you do now in the cloud with my exchange server. But, yeah. but, but we, what we did do, what we're not doing now, we did a lot of direct mail and we had our own, I didn't, we had mail in house. I didn't contract out my mail because my design co bill construction had a draftsman yeah. and he ran the real estate in the, um, my design company did the marketing. So wow. I mean, we did, did all that in house, but my question is, you know, it's changing so much now. How did you get going? What did you do? I mean, did you make a list? Uh, I mean, I ask a couple other things too to think about. Did yeah. you go traditionally you know, for sale by owners and expireds? No, not at all. Really? Um, although my, my first listing was I had sent a postcard. I literally sent like three three to 10 postcards to expired. And mm -hmm. my first listing, somebody responded. because It was just a handwritten card. Yeah. And I, you know, I said, what I, you know, I didn't say anything that wasn't true. You know, they, they, they had a bad run the first time. But for me, I think the most important thing was the first four months that I was in real estate, I really, I had a mentor who was my friend who sold me my house and, you know, we're still great friends. And she was sending me a lot of her leads online that she couldn't keep up with. So I didn't need to pay for those right away. I just gave a percentage if I closed them. Um, and I really surveyed what was there. And at the time I was just building my social profiles and I wasn't too concerned with overpaying in the beginning. I wanted to see what everybody else was using and I would try out a couple things. But the, the truth is, you know, if you go in too big, you get locked in with something like Zillow, you're locked in for a year. You don't even know what you're doing and you waste six months. Yeah. So I waited until I understood, you know, what the technology was going to do for me. And then I tried it. And, you know, some of them fail. You know, you have I, I occasionally speak at like uh, for new, in new realtor classes before they're licensed. And the first thing they ask is like, how much money do you need? And when I said you need to have at least a stockpile of like $5,000 minimum just in the bank, because how do you think business, you don't just sit there and go like this and wait for the business to come out of the clouds. Like you have to go get it. And, and that means just not just paying your dues. You have to figure out some way of marketing. And I, I did, I did some postcards. Um, but you know, I think in the beginning they were really like kind of untargeted. I was targeting just around my own home without really any real directive. And as I got into the market and started to understand it more, then I really knew uh, what to do. So I think, you know, taking it slow, too many people come in and they're like, I have to make money. I'm like, you're not making money right away. First of all, you know, you're at least 60 days out on a closing. So even if you get lucky, you're still waiting. So you have to, you know, ha have some leeway to figure out what you're going to do. And enough, you know, enough sense to, to kind of wait it out and see what everyone else is doing, build relationships, go to go to broker open houses. That was huge for me. I would go to, you know, 10 on Thursday, 10 on Friday, just to see what's on the market, talk to the other realtors who didn't know me. And I felt like I developed, you know, six months of relationships quickly by just being out there and being a part of the community. And, and that's, that's how I, I've stayed. You know, I do a lot of, of stuff for the local board here and I, I, I have, uh, you know, I have good friends at all the agencies in town, I, I think. Yeah. So, so first of all, that first six months, you were kind of trying to learn the land, you know, the landscape, what might work for your particular style. And you had your friend giving you so many leads that she couldn't cope with and you were doing a split. So after that six months, what was the first kind of um, process either software online that you actually bought in that you found reasonably effective that was generating leads for you, Jonathan? Well, I mean, as realtors, we all go both ways. I've done, I've been very successful with Zillow because I take it with a grain of salt. Um, not the leads are not all great, but that, I mean, wow, what system is going to feed you all great leads? You're, you have to imagine what they're doing. You, if you get a lead at 2.30 in the morning, I mean, it's probably not that great because there, people are looking. I mean, that's what the site's for. But for me, I was seeing the leads that were coming in that my friend was giving me. So I bought in on some leads on Zillow early and I, I was getting a return because I respond right away. I give them value. Uh, you know, too many people think, oh, well, the leads come in and I can just hang out for a couple hours. I know the statistics are so if you respond within five minutes, you're 100 times more likely to to, to move forward with, with that lead than if you respond in an hour. So, you know, sometimes it's a race because three or four of you get the lead at the same time. And, and you know, I, I just try to not just get back to them first, but to provide some value and literally no pressure. 
you know, I, I don't want to pressure anyone into it. And SmartZip was one of the first things that I was involved in too, because my friend had it. And again, she was too busy. So I started managing that. And I was like, whoa, this is, this is cool because, you know, for a new agent, it's not that easy to get listings. So something like SmartZip is a great way to have access to potential sellers. And if you're doing hard work for a listing, you know, that's going to be more profitable than doing hard work for, for buyers long term. Yeah. What so, smart what smart zip run cost you? And, and that's the first thing you really use, yeah, right? Again, like I said, you can spend whatever you want. The amount that you spend, um, it, it just defines how many homes are in your neighborhood. So I mean, like I said, if somebody spends a hundred dollars I don't a month, I don't think you're gonna get the, enough activity to make it worth it. I think the the recommendation somewhere it's gonna be between like 300, 500 people probably spend more, but you know, you have to have enough to work with. And, and with all of these online uh, lead sources, there's some risk involved. And that's why, like I said in the beginning, like I think too many people are, you know, it's like day three and they're like on the phone with Zillow saying, hey, you know, I don't have any leads. And they're like, just wait, you know, just you'll get leads. And then they start coming and you don't know what to do with them. You know, so if, well, you, don't, if you don't have these processes set up. They're in what I call hunting mode. Yeah, a lot. A lot of this is farming, folks. You yeah. you, you lay the seeds down. And you go wait for the crop to come up, folks. Yeah. Yeah, um, um, so yeah, that's really interesting. So I think um, I, I put it like this. Uh, also, um, I, uh, when I'm talking to agents, I say. I don't think it's a great idea relying on just one resource. I think I think you rely on a resource to get going. If you if you're putting one dollar in, you're getting two dollars back. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, right. But right. it's giving you the time to sow. And what I mean by that is, like, if you've got somebody in in your office who's too busy and you can do a split and they're giving you some of the leads, that's even greater, isn't it? Yeah. It's a, it's a win-win, isn't it? But you've got – this is buying you time to be building up your own database. And I think – I mean, I call it a third, a third, a third. I think if you've got three active morphologies – that give you quality leads, that's the best long-term situation because you're not just relying on one resource to provide 80, 90% of your leads. And I think that's yeah. a dangerous place. What yeah, do you think absolutely. Of yeah, I agree with you. And I think that, you know, even if you don't want to spend money, there's things you can do, you know, get out and ask people to do open houses or, you know, use meetup.com. If you go on meetup, there's like a hundred real estate groups, just go and make contacts. You know, it's, it's not that hard to make contacts, you know, but you just can't be over aggressive about it. Um, but you know, I think that if, if you're an agent who's not social within your own office, you cannot succeed as a new person. You have to find a mentor and people who are willing to say, do you want to do this open house? Because if you're not if you're not like developing good relationships within your office and you ask someone to do an open house and they don't even know you, they're gonna say no because it's their seller, their listing. They don't wanna trust you with that. But if you've developed relationships, you know, I, I in the beginning I, I developed a lot of relationships. I did things for people without asking for money. You know, if they needed something covered, I would cover it. And then I, I was doing a lot of open houses. Sometimes I, I'd get asked for a few on, on one weekend because they knew I would handle the open house well. And I would make sure that they got the leads uh, that were, if someone were coming in looking for them, and I only took the leads that had no agents, you know, and no reference for anybody else. That's great. That, that's very good. I've got, I, um, I don't, I, I've got to apologize, Jonathan. I've got to leave now because I've got an appointment. Yeah, but, I would um, like to stay on a few more, more minutes. Yeah. Okay. I'm understanding why. Yeah, that'd I, be if great. you don't mind, Jonathan. Yep, I leave that to Jonathan. But I'll be getting in contact with you, Jonathan. I think okay. we've covered we've covered some fantastic stuff. And um, um, Bill's he's got years of experience. He, actually, his wife is excellent. She's got the same kind of feel that you have. That she's there to serve people rather than yeah. Um, and I think people can sense that, can't they, Jonathan? If you're just in, you know, obviously you've got to make a good living and you're there of the business. But if they if they get that feeling, all you're just interested in is in that dollar, they can sense it, can't they, Jonathan? Can't they? right away? 
I mean, all of us can, you know, if they're pushing you to do something that you're not comfortable with, that, that, that it's out of balance, you know, yeah. it, it's not, it's, uh, you know, they're your client, you have a fiduciary duty to, to help them and uh, not release any of their private information and make sure they're well taken care of. Right. Thanks, Jonathan. I'll speak to you Thanks soon. Thanks, time. Bill. See you yeah. later, hey, Bill. Jonathan. Very good show. Hey, um, also, this will be up today. And this will be up. As soon as we're done with the show here, I'll go into editing. It actually, for a 30 minute show, it takes me a minimum hour and a half to edit, 30 minutes to prep in whatever time the show takes. One of my yeah. addiction is on this blab is what we're doing right now. I talk, you know, instead of getting to work, we're talking. So I, I block four and a half hours a day for what we're doing right now. But yeah, it's an amazing well, source great. to learn at what we're doing. Yeah. You, I'm, I'm really impressed with your background and how fast you've moved oh, now. Thanks. You're going on, what was that new product? You're going on the new, you're changing products, right? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm starting to use a company called Curator, which is C-U-R-A-Y-T-O-R. Yeah, one of my wife's friends Jimmy is Macken. Curator. It, it's just, it's, you know, I'm a big proponent of Facebook ads, but they do it a hundred times better than I do. That's very expensive. Um, Curator is like 1500 bucks to start, isn't it? Or yeah, it's expensive. I mean, the thing is, I, you know, when I started looking at it when I was new, I'm looking at a price per month and I'm like, I, I, I can't do that because I don't have enough business for it to even work with. But then when you look and work with all these other products and somebody tells you, we're going to flat out charge you this month, <laughs> this much, but it's going to be worth it. And you can look at the testimonials of agents that I know who use it and the results. And it's just going to, it's, I need something to make my life easier. I mean, I'm in real estate so I can you know, I can pick up my kids at school and I can set my own schedule. But once you get really busy and like I said, I don't have an admin or a buyer's agent at all yet. Um, I need something yeah. that's one system, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in Zillow and then I'm in my CRM and then I'm in SmartZip and I'm in BombBomb. I'm in all of these things. And I want something that's really centrally located where I don't have to spend my own time doing all of the activity. I need somebody else to, to help. I see a question from Alicia. I'm in Montclair, New Jersey. Yeah, wait, Montclair, New Jersey. Uh, you can come on if you want to. Uh, Essex County. Yeah. So where are you located? What's nice, I'll find, um, where are you from? Uh, I'm originally from Brooklyn. But right, right. No, I saw that, Brooklyn. I'm seeing uh, Ali yeah. Alicia. Alicia? Oh, yeah. Alicia Kush, Real Estate Networking, Personal Growth. I'm just pulling up Alicia's back. What's really nice is you can pull up the uh, blab and find out what area. Oh, Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, Phoenix is a great area for real estate. I haven't even been reading over here. Somebody said I sound there, like there Troy she. Aikman. I, I wish I had that you commercial. That you know, he has. He has a, basketball he has a, yeah, I was. I, I play basketball with Nafo. Alicia, did I say that right? You're from Arizona. Very. Hey, you know, you speak really well with your background. Hi, Alicia from Arizona. Hi, guys. Hi. Your sound isn't coming in. We'll, we'll fix that, okay? So we're not listening okay. to you. I Go hear ahead. It now. Go ahead, Alicia. Sound check. Can you hear me? Loud yep. and clear. Awesome. This is my first time ever calling into a lab. So. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> we do a lot of first timers. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm in Arizona and um, I work with a mortgage company and I do a lot of um, coaching and training for the loan originators and the realtors here in the Phoenix area. And I also work with some people in Nebraska as well. So I have a team out there and some people in California. Um, what yeah. mortgage company do you don't mind? You work for a mortgage company? Yeah, uh, the company I work for is People's Mortgage Company. And then I also do some coaching on the side as well. Um, but a big part of my role at People's Mortgage is to coach the realtors and loan originators. You know, the kind of the thought is if I can help realtors grow their business, Obviously, in turn, they're going to refer their buyers back to us. So that's a great idea for a mortgage company. I don't hear that very often, but uh, yeah, coaching as opposed to just going out and, you know, sitting in an open house with somebody, right? Starting being the professional and learning about the systems. It looks like a pretty good sized company, People's Mortgage Company. Yeah. So, um, and it is different. There's not really many mortgage companies out there providing a role like I have. Um, so it helps our loan originators get to focus more on the loans if I help bring more business in. So they're not out looking for business so much. And it obviously helps the local realtors. I add value to their business um, rather than, you know, especially with all the RESPA rules and things come cracking down where, you know, it's not so much anymore yeah. about who has the biggest pockets. <laughs> I've got an attorney and I've got you and my wife. I wish she was on right now. You could listen to her. Um, first of all, my background, my wife, this is very frustrating. We left, um, 
we wanted to escape Modesto. I was there because I was a reservist at a Moffett Field, and my first jobs were building houses in Central Valley. Ended up in Central Valley, commuting to Moffett for the reserve. And we sort of stuck in Modesto, which is the hub of the agribusiness. And unfortunately, I ran for city council and I won in the middle of when my co- my design build company is doing amazingly well. And it was a struggle between uh, being a council member, design build construction. My wife was running a real estate and a mortgage company. So we were busy. And then my wife, after we were pretty successful, decided to have two more kids, which she did real well. But it forced us into teams and delegating out and growing. And then 9-11 hit. So we have a broad background in all of these areas. But we know I'm having a huge challenge right now is I went back in the military for five years on a special program, which I loved. But um, when I got out, I said, you know what? I want to get out of the city. Everyone knows me and I love the people. And the city is mixed match. We have a pretty hardcore. It's a hard city. It's a, it's a Stockton. Central Valley is a tough town. And I just want to get out to the uh, Sierras, live in the mountains. And so I've done that. But what's really frustrating is how much work it's been for my wife to reestablish in real estate. I mean, literally walked away from $100,000 of commission. So she's like 50 and she's having to start over. And yet she's CRS, GRI, um, coming tough, to new. It's tough to move a, move a market. But I mean, I think a lot of the stuff that we talked about today makes, uh, makes it easier long term. If you've built a social networking brand, you've built your site, you know, you, you take it with you. you yeah. know, most of the time. You take your social profiles with you. And then when you have social proof like oh. reviews, uh, they're coming with you. So here's a problem. When I'm back in the military, though, um, we were very sophisticated up to about 2007. I went back in in 2007, and you know, before the crash, we survived the crash. By the way, I thought we, I was really happy with how we prepared for the downsizing. And I came back off a of Christmas break and about killed me when my wife wanted to shut down the real estate company because she's so concerned. There's absolutely no reason to do that. If you know how much the TI costs and the building and the leases and everything and the phone systems and <laughs> oh, it just killed me. And we did the TIs. My company did the TIs. So I mean, I work for somebody else. I don't, and and, I, and she didn't want to spend a hundred thousand dollars to reestablish an office here, and she still has a little office over there. And I, I mean, anyway, my wife is not a good. She's really good with people and clients, and loves people and loves real estate, but she is not a good manager in in a real estate. I mean, she's a broker, but not. I I can't. I got to watch what I say. She doesn't like to take the responsibility. <laughs> no, no. A better way to say it is she's so concerned. She doesn't like the responsibility of management. And she likes to do a lot of stuff herself, the process. I mean, we had a processor. I had a team around her and we had two other teams. I'm a big believer in teams. So we focused at three mm-hmm. small teams Leverage. that made, I mean, she had, she was carrying 12, 14 listings at different times. So you make good money when you have yeah. that many listings, but you can't yeah. do it all yourself. But anyway, she's having a hard time reestablishing over here. She started, she's a broker in both states and she started a little real estate company initially and she finally joined another brokerage here. But how does she reestablish? How do I get her going? Also, she has me. And I think there's a little bit there because, you know, I've been the guy in the town who was known and she wants to do it herself. So it's really, really a unique situation and she's well liked. Well, I think um, Jonathan mentioned earlier about social networks. You know, I if if it were me, I would have her ask people from her social network from you know where you were in California, who they know, where you yeah, are now. And have her ask them to give her introductions, you know, start it through the social networks, move that to private messaging and then set up face to face appointments. You know, it's that whole six degree of separation thing. Right. And I think Jonathan also mentioned meetup. Well, no, Jonathan Green has true meetup groups. And I actually have a meetup group here. I need to revitalize. I've got 600 entrepreneurs here in Reno. And what I found is most of them were the MLM uh, drawn people for the most part. I still have that. And I have a WordPress group of 120 in Reno. I mean, when you're new to a market, everybody is a possibility. You just, you know, got to get out there. And if you can, if you can get out there, but then you have all the social proof sitting behind you on the internet, then when they go to look at your card, you know, the worst thing for a realtor ever is to give somebody a card with a website that they haven't done any work to. Like, that's just like, Makes no sense to me. Like, why didn't you work on your website? The first thing that everyone does when they get a business card is they go click on the website because they're not going to call you. They're going to look and see the website. And if the website's not, you know, up to date, current and interesting, they're never going to call you. The card goes right in the garbage. Click it and check out our blog real fast. Um, some Now, I've tried to get her to blog. It's like she's not a blogger, so I've tried to help her with blogging. It's kind of real interesting. She went to school. She's from Beverly, Mass. Went to school in Salem State. I met her when I was 19. 
Nice. I mean, block. I went to school in Massachusetts. So, <laughs> I did too for a little while. She's a hockey player. Her brothers are all hockey players. <laughs> I graduated from West Cheshire. Oh, West Cheshire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, I, what I think it is too is we have it's like two separate families. I mean, we've been married thirty some odd years. We have a twenty nine year old and a a, thir a thirteen and a fifteen, and she loves gymnastics. She was in New York City last week. Um, our thirteen year old won the uh, Manhattan Classic at uh, for level awesome. thirteen to sixteen, level eight. So, nice. so anyway, I mean, I just it's it's really frustrating. I'm trying to figure out. I've got a. She's got. I, I'm a team believer. I was I was going to set up an office with just a small office with two max and try to hire. I want her to hire local agents because she literally, we really don't know a lot of people here, even though I guess I've made contact. And it, it can't be me. It's got to be her making that personal contact unless I want to do real estate. What I did when we did real well after 2004, I got off hack to duty. I would go out and just focusing on listings and mostly farmland, ag land, building sites in Central Valley. And um, I, then I would list it and then I'd turn it over to the team. I wouldn't do anything else than list every day. But yeah, I mean, I, if she if she's new to the area, I mean, if you got to get in with the, like you said, she's working for another brokerage. I mean, it'd be really hard to start your own thing in a brand new area yeah. um, against the bigger brokerages. That would be really tough. Yeah, I just, uh, anyway, I just, just a thought. I mean, she did do that, but I would have um, liked to seen her just set up a small, I wanted to set up an office like a Mac, you know, Apple store with two IMAX in the front and then recruit agents. And because uh, we've actually had a course in our class that I developed, we trained a hundred agents over a period of time. And, and I did it, nice. I streamlined it too. I used a principal's course in California. But anyway, it is very frustrating. But Jonathan, you've done well starting. I mean, you've got right out and going. What, what were, I mean, you talked about it, but we, I, I can't quite figure out how you started though. I mean, you didn't go with expireds. You didn't hit the oh. for sale by owners. Oh, no, not a, never. See, to me, to me, she's had a little bit of success going and offering a one day listing for a for sale by owner because then she can flip up a website like this website. I just flipped up there. If yeah. you click that, I've tied that to Amazon S3 and then I branded that address and she's getting really good Google juice out of it. Um, you can go up if you put Karen Conrad two words Google it and go to images, you're going to see all her flyers starting to because I've tagged those flyers. I'm not really getting any too many results from it, but I think if she does it enough, it'll work. So you don't think she can go to Bill, has she has she thought about doing any local She's door knocking that. and Please. driving? She actually knocked on doors, which amazes with me. I don't like her knocking on I don't like knocking on doors between you and I. She I maybe the five five around the listing, yeah. the five five and ten. But yeah, I mean I'm good with the knocking around the, one of my listings, but I mean yeah. um I don't know. I it, any any way to get out there for me you were talking about fizbos for me like i they already hate agents so i just <laughs> i don't want to convince them they're always going to be thinking i'm doing something that i'm not doing so you know even when you call on a fizbo and you say you know i, I really have like even i really have someone who's interested you know yeah. they get so many calls from other agents who are faking like they have someone interested so they're always on the defensive. The reason they didn't hire an agent in the first place is because they didn't want to pay you. So what do you think is going to happen when you get into the transaction and yeah. you, you're at 6% and then they want you to be at a lesser percentage? Like it's just, you know, it's it, it, it's just that I just feel like I can spend my time better. That's how I feel. So the, you know, what's next? Next is expireds. I, I mean, like I said, I got lucky. I, I, I wrote a, I write a handwritten letter once in a while, but I go through the expireds and I look at homes I'd actually want to list. Not, I don't just like scrape the bucket on ones that are in bad shape because I know that's more right. work for me. Um, so generally, I don't really, I don't really get, I, I've done a couple expireds. You know, they came to me through either a postcard or a referral. Uh, and I do well with them. You know, they both sold right away because they, you know, you transform what they did before. But again, it's uh, it's an uphill climb. And where I am, I, I there's I just know I, there's a company I know that that robo calls them, so I don't mm -hmm. want to be the eleventh in line. You know? So per, per, your personal farm and your <laughs> geographical farm, do you work that concept? Yeah, I mean, through SmartSip, I work my geo farm a lot. Uh, you know, the the area. Uh, you know, if I if I change it, then I have to rework that a little. Um, but I think for me, it's really about vetting my database and combing it all the time instead of just putting stuff in it. You know, I'm going in, I'm editing it, I'm updating the contacts that I've had, which reminds me when I need to contact somebody and what our last contact was. You know, 
if you're not in tune with your system and your stuff just gets lost in your email, you know, you have leads buried in there, return responses where they said they were interested that you didn't get to. So well, uh, I'm going to try <laughs> to manage her backside, help her on the backside on the systems. Uh, you know, the email, go ahead. Bill, or Jonathan, either one of you, are you guys familiar with Nextdoor.com yeah, as well? What is yeah. next? I'm, I'm Googling it right now. Next. It's like Patch, the local neighborhood yeah. site. I mean, we have one for, for my block. Uh, but, you know, the, like, the, it, like for me, like I participate in a lot of Facebook groups and Nextdoor, but I never say I'm a realtor um, because I think there's parts of uh, people violate the terms of the service by – you know, I, I don't want to trick someone into knowing anything. Like I, I'll just add value if they're asking for inspectors. I'll post the names and I don't I don't follow up with I'm a realtor. I figure the more I'm around, they'll be like, I know that guy, you know, or I'll say I referred them to a client, but I don't, you know, I it's it's a little touchy in the forums because you really can't advertise. So, right. you know, for me it's a great place to just add value and be part of the community like you would out, you know, out on the streets if somebody asks you a question. Yeah. So we've had some success where I've teamed up loan originators and realtors where one or the other is, you know, in a neighborhood with nextdoor.com or they started the nextdoor.com for their neighborhood and that gave them a reason to door knock. So they weren't door knocking to specifically ask for business. However, we created flyers to let the community know about nextdoor.com and they door knocked telling them about the nextdoor.com site, asking them to join. And then just at the bottom of the print piece showing nextdoor.com, we had the realtor and loan originator co-branded. And that not only you know, it helped both the loan officer and the realtor, but it obviously also solidified their relationship a little bit stronger going out and doing that together. And I know two realtors that have gotten a couple of listings doing that without specifically asking. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, like for me, you know? I, I have no, you know, like I don't have a problem at all with the door knocking because I, you know, next door will either send out mailers uh, for you. Um, personally, I, I personally wouldn't put any information there, but you know, the, the, I just, it's the, it's how the person acts. Like if you're going to be aggressive about it, it's not going to go well. If it's just a kind of, you know, we sponsored this and you hand it and nothing else. And I think you're just, you're just delivering goodwill. And, you know, I mean, come on, we all get stuff at the supermarket. There's three advertisements in front of me. So it's advertising as long as you're not pushing it into somebody's face, you know, it, it's how the world works. That's that's what we did it as goodwill to let the community know that the site exists and to get it up and running. And yeah, it is great to community. be the point person for the site uh, because you 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 know you ha you're just helping neighbors. It's neighbors helping neighbors. So uh, I think it's a great site. Are you going to stick with um, Smart Zip when you go to Curator? Yeah, I mean, I, I've got probably five months left on my contract at SmartSip, and I, I because I love the product, I'm going to stick it out and see how it goes. I mean, I'm getting some pretty good results lately, but, you know, just like with anything, it's, you know, in, in my market, it's a very hot market. Most of the people who are going to sell, well, they already know agents or have referrals. So you really, even the, you're dealing with a very small percentage of potential uh, options, but, you know, uh, you know, I market in a different way. I, I do social in a different way. So I'll stick with it. But I, I'm excited. You know, my curator site goes up at the end of February. And that's, I'm really excited about that. You know, it's a, it'll be an alternative new site, uh, a lot more, uh, a lot more things that uh, that can be done off of it in terms of landing pages and things like that. So February, in February, end of the month, it goes up. How long a contract did you have to sign? About curator six months, and then it's month to month after that. So you're that's locked in for six months. You know, just like a lot of things, I mean, even though I've argued a hundred times with Zillow, the reason why they lock you in for X amount of time is because it doesn't work unless you, you stay on, yeah. you know, you stay like you, nothing works unless you're at it for six months uh, in terms of advertising, yeah. because, you know, if you mail to a farm area and you send two postcards and you're like, oh, this doesn't work. I mean, the studies say you need eight. So that's, we, used to, that's eight honestly, we, we used to send, um, literally we spend 5,000 bucks a month. And probably 3,000 was on postcards. Yeah, I mean, I, I still look at every postcard I get. I just, to me, like I look at uh, print advertising like postcards as a supplement to my social now. 
uh, or they work together to build my brand. Yeah. But I mean, personally, I like the way postcards look. So when they come in, I look at them all. I think I, you I really can do. A postcard you can direct to that website. You know, this is crazy and QR codes are ancient. I'm thinking, I, I interviewed a guy about 10 sessions ago on timelines who had QR codes and he got me thinking a little bit differently about putting a little QR code in the bottom because of the I smartphone. I know some people who do it. I know some people who use them. Well, you know, the smartphone has really ignited podcasts. Yeah, oh yeah. And, yeah. and the smartphone is doing so much more. I got the big one here, which I love. But I, was, I got the simple QR code reader and started playing with it. And I could see how it works. You know, my clients are politicians and I'm not sure, you know, real estate agents eventually. I, this is a new business for me. I've been in a couple of years. I'm trying something new since my, we're not, you know, starting a full-blown real estate company. But, um, yeah, trying to figure out what to get going. I still can't quite – now, on Curator, you might really take off. So, Jonathan, what are you doing right now? How? What's your day like? How many – like, are you, how many closings are you getting or what's happening? I mean, I mean I, 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 I'm, I'm as busy as I really want to be, to be honest. I mean, that's like nice. – that's nice. It's not that I, you know, I, my focus is my kids first. So uh, yeah. I'm not going to overdo myself and, and take away from the time that I have with my kids. So, you know, I, I'm now I'm busy, you know, going into working with curator. I'm going to, I'm going to need an admin, uh, but I'm very, yeah. I'm kind of a control freak on, on that stuff. So I feel weird about giving over access uh, to anyone, but I needed admin and I'll probably hire a buyer's agent soon. Is that what they uh, teach I'll, is admin? Yeah. You focus on the listings. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I, you know, I'm not, I don't want a traditional team approach. I'm looking to develop something that gives the <laughs> team members who come in a lot more on the plate. You know, a lot of agencies, the bigger agencies that you work for, you know, you get on a team as a buyer's agent and you're literally getting like 30% of your already, whatever, 60% yeah. split. And it's just not worth it. Like, that's not interesting to me. I don't want to take, I don't want to take, like if I hire a buyer's agent, I don't want to take their leads. If they come up with a lead on their own, that's not through one of my sources. Like they can have it. That's all their lead. I don't, you know, unless I'm doing marketing for them. So I'm trying to come up with kind of my own system that will really empower the people who, who are working with me and for me. So we really are a team instead of, you know, a, a top person yeah. and, and minions, which does happen. Sometimes. Well, you know, a, a buyer's agent and an assistant is all you, and you is all you need. And the buyer's agent, um, we, we're the broker, so we could go like 50% among the teams, but we'd set people, teams yeah. up with buyer's agents. So the one agent would just focus at the listing. Because if you get, listing is so much work just to get that listing. Is so yeah, hard. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's a different focus in the databases. You know, you're either in Zillow for our buyer leads or you're you're looking through SmartSip and combing through all of our other things, you know, which will be coming from, from Curator to, to, to look through for the listing. So I, you know, I, I just want to be prepared. I mean, I feel like I'm a systems systems guy so i'm trying to be ready for everything but one everyone question. in real estate knows when it comes it can't it doesn't stop hey one last question we'll get off <laughs> you can never be no, ready for no, everything no. <laughs> a, couple, a couple last questions really um and we'll definitely you know there's some other shows you might want to we've got a new um uh, art show it's going to eventually pop up here from laguna beach and you might want to come up Great. on that show yeah we have timelines uh alicia it's alicia right alicia you can do a timeline yeah, one of these days is. with me. All I'd ask is um, consider getting an ATR2100 and playing with it. It's $50. That's all you need. I want ATR2100. Um, let me, I, I don't know where mine is. I got one out here. For my. Oh, here it is. My field stuff. This mic right here. It's USB yeah. plugs right into your computer. What kind of computer do you have, Jonathan? I've got a big Mac, Mac on the desk. Oh, yeah, you got the iMac. You know, I, I just got my wife to go after to a MacBook Pro. Yeah, 13.5 and she loves it now and she's like oh man most agents don't have macbooks they use pcs and it's so i haven't touched a pc in like 25 years this is 32 dollars. this is 50 dollars. Yeah, you, yeah. you can upgrade to the next one on this which has the same guts a little more durable a little cooler looking for 80 dollars you get yeah, this I and you're done need that. yeah i need and it and you look cool like this you actually so credibility <laughs> it's, better, it's better than this in this world well actually that's not if you're going to use something that's what you use yeah. Is that that system right there? Problem is those wear out pretty fast. Yeah, I know. My kids and I go through them all. Oh, we the time. do too. I, I burn through this thing. I break them and destroy them. I get, I'm losing them. I drop them. You name it. So anyway, <laughs> I, I want to find out how you do in Curator. My last question is, what was the sales pitch from Curator? What made you go over to it? What did they do? The, I mean, the truth is, I'm such a researcher. They really didn't have to pitch me. I had already done the research for six months to a year. 
and I was just waiting until my business was ready for them. And then once it was, I, you know, I, I mean, I probably made it seem like I, I was harder on the sales than I was, but I knew I was going to get it. I just, I wanted to hear about it. And, you know, for me, like uh, Chris Smith and Jimmy Mack and the, there you talk to them every day if you want to you can email them they'll email you back in five minutes so if i'm working with a company and i'm spending that much money i want to have access and you know I, all you have to do is for me look through their materials it's why i use any company it's why i use smart tip even though i wrote the article i still use them because i like the company the products work and if the products work you know like i said way way back probably a, a long time ago on this before you know for for real estate agents if you uh it's about the ROI. So if if it makes me money, uh, then it's doing a good job. And and I I, I know I know right away that I'll, I'll do well with Curator. But again, it's not j it's them providing me back end and a lot a lot of technical help. But I still have to go do it in the field uh, and and you know make those relationships and be there one on one well, with people. Do me a favor. After you've been on Curator for a month, we're going to be on every day on Thursdays live here on Blab, yeah. so you can find you can find us anytime. You can find I'll me be real easy because I, I've, you'll, you'll get the email with the timelines interview, and John, I'm helping Jonathan with feed. I, I again, uh, Jonathan is a bunch of coders and programmers. And they know nothing about sales per se. I've watched <laughs> Jonathan evolve over the last few years, and um, building uh, what they they call their um, their they're building their SaaS software as a service yeah. products. Yeah. I've seen yeah. spend a lot of money doing it. They were they were looking at a product for. Uh, for uh, veterinarians and then someone they went to real estate veterinarians and their folks everyone thinks they can hit vet uh, you know the real estate agents on everything because you know how many calls we get uh, there's twenty thousand products out there for real estate agents now, and they're biting on almost all of them so you know i'm looking at different offices some offices are better square away than others there's just so much out there it's yeah th it's it's mind-numbing i mean you could just go on twitter for an hour and you'll see 50 different products um but, you know, I mean, the thing for me is that's why I use a source like Inman News. Like they know everything and they'll have a review for everything. And, you know, I, I read up just as I would on anything yeah. else to make sure that I can see the recommendations out there and double check it with colleagues and see if they've yeah. used it to make sure that if I'm going to spend, I'm at least, uh, you know, hedging my bets towards something that's going to work for me personally. On the song. And uh, anyway, to come back to us, give us a heads up how it's going with Curator. And are you going to try to do anything like a blab like you're doing right now for the community or any? Yeah, I mean, I did Periscope for a while. I just felt like I was always looking at the screen and I like it. I mean, I'm comfortable, obviously, in front of the, you know, audience. I don't mind. I do trainings all the time, but I like blab. So, you know, I, it looks pretty, pretty fun to me. And I've been thinking about podcasts for years. So, well, you know, I'll I, be calling I, you. <laughs> I start. Well, yeah. And tell you what, I've got a, a new product that's going to launch. It's the $5 blab course. So I'll give you that to you for free for coming yeah, on. Uh, I'm trying to launch it this weekend. What, one of my big challenges that I've had is, I, this is ridiculous, but I was ready to launch an online course eight months ago, and then Blab mm -hmm. showed up. And I, I had it. Basically, I told people, do not go into podcasting. It's too difficult. Make make your online content with, with right. the, the same tools we use for podcasting, but then put it up on YouTube until you get comfortable and then go to podcasting and you'll have a big right, chance. Right. Because podcasting... Yeah. That little jump from YouTube into podcasting. I need a lot of editing. I like. I know I can't do it. I just. I have to figure out. I, I can get the material, but somebody else is going to need to do the editing. It takes me. Like it, my first uh, edits on for a thirty-minute podcast took me eight hours. Yeah, it that sounds takes me about right. Half an hour to do thirty minutes. <laughs> yeah. You'll catch yeah. the day. I, I pride myself on doing a daily podcast, almost a daily podcast, and getting it up the same day. A lot of guys uh, will, great. will do like eight in one day. And they'll put them up, you know, have 45, 45 days later, the right, podcast will right. come out. So, yeah, but the, well, I'll be interested to see how our edits. Sound. And I'm interested in cure before what it's worth is I might go for it and try curator with Karen. And yeah. And one thing that I think Jonathan has done right, he does have, a, and I'm trying to tell him make a low end cost loss leader. He's got this little feed. You have a Facebook page. I take it right. Yep. Business page. Can you drop that yep. in real fast? Yeah. Or look at it. Anyway, he's got a feed that actually does work, and he's got some pretty good content. You know, most agents will not feed their Facebook page with content. So. Oh yeah, I mean, I I, I I post the content myself. You know, I don't yeah. I don't cross content post really anything. Well, but uh, 
Well, this is for the agent just getting going, and it, like I think you should drop like yeah. seven bucks a month, and it drops in a nice piece of content every day, and it's really nice. I've seen it; it really yeah, is, yeah. and I've helped him improve on that content. I don't make anything from his stuff. I mean, yeah, I mean it's certainly useful. Jonathan's introduced me to the very top WordPress people in the world. That's where my that's where my benefit has come from a relationship. The very top in the world. Yeah, because yeah, I think he's got a hard market to shoot for. He makes money um, by doing some high end work on you know, other businesses, websites. Right. But, right. but, uh, that's your face. Is that your Facebook page? Let me look at it real fast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I work on it. I mean, I post a lot of I, content. I like but, your Twitter uh, a lot. I like your Twitter page. Oh, I like that. It's beautiful. I, you do. Your yeah, own I, what's that? Do you own artwork? No, no. I mean, I grab it from, from wherever the Twitter, no, buy, something sell, Bill like, give, you made that. Right? That's for, that's from give back homes. You know, they're, they're partnered one of my partner relationships and they, they give me uh, marketing materials like that. Uh, so I can promote us doing. Oh, I like it. Together. We've already got the, um, the post from today up on your site there. Did you do, do that? I did that before. That's yeah. good. That's my cheesy. I'm, I'm not, I I've got to improve on my graphic artwork. Hey, there's Mike. It's a good guy. My, so you know each other before you take Jonathan. I know you have to take off, but Mike is very Yeah, I've got successful. five minutes. He's, hey, no, he's I just wanted successful. to stop in it. I just I've been listening. I just wanted to stop in and uh, say hello here. He, hello. Mike, I do want to talk to you after the show. We'll let Jonathan take off. But well, Mike has Mike for 10 years has been online and in life insurance sales plus all the sports. You're you're into sports too. I know you're big into basketball, right, Jonathan? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm big into sports too. My like my kids are like top gymnasts in the in the United States. So yeah, one of them, awesome. the bottom one, Let me just youngest one. This, uh, oh yeah. Let me yeah. see if it all uh, back it up a little. And my wife is into sports too. What nice, nice, nice. So I loved it. One of my dreams is to become a referee too. <laughs> no, high school, high school football. I could never referee. put up with that uh, at all. Or, I was a terrible referee. I did it like twice. That was enough. In basketball. Yeah, really? too much complaining. Heard, too much complaining. Oh, I heard that people love it when basketball referees high school. No, nah, I mean I I tried it when I was yeah I was probably in middle school when I tried it and gave up really quickly. Uh, I heard that's cool. I nah, I think it's something you can do I when you're older. Yeah, oh no, you oh, see that I, Super I Bowl that one ref. Let me tell you this, and I this came up at a I was at a, a booster club meeting last night. I was talking with one of the other coaches, and uh, he said, you know, you know who the best kid the coach is. Who's that? An orphan. Because <laughs> you don't have to deal with the parents. <laughs> yeah, you are coaching the parents the whole time. All right, guys, sorry, I got to take off. Hey, Jonathan, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. We went good long, but you, good Bill, luck. And keep us, really tell us how that's going. It. And I'll have this up today. I'll send you an email. All right, great. Thanks. Appreciate take it. Take care. Thanks, guys. Hey, Mike, I'm happy you're on. I wanted to talk to you really fast. Yeah, because I, I got I to gotta do a call at 2 o'clock. I, I definitely want to do a show tomorrow. Okay. I want to set it up though. Here's here. I thought of this brilliant idea. I'm not going to use my feed, my uh, podcaster's home. I'm going to use the one we created. It's ours. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use tomorrow's show for the podcast. Now, here's the what, question. What time though? Do I think I need to do it at the normal time, even though I think the better time to do it is 12. if I do it at 12 your time, that's nine my time. But I think the best time to do it is actually three your time. You know, which I couldn't do tomorrow. So two to three, but I said for tomorrow, so we have at least something consistent. Yeah, let's do it at let's do it at nine and twelve. And but I know, but just looking at the numbers and playing and looking at this, it looks like the best time is between two and three, East Coast time. Okay, the best possible time to do a business type blab. And what we want to do our swing on, I think yeah, we've got a terrible name, but we're going to stick with it right now. Wow. But I think what we want to stick with is the idea is we want to prevent people from getting scammed. But we want to show people how they can do business and work and what really does work. That no, was an excellent interview today. He's doing curator, which is super expensive. He's going to be spending like twenty four thousand dollars, I think. For I'm guessing maybe I don't know how much twelve thousand, fifteen thousand, sixteen thousand, twenty thousand. I don't know. For no, six I, months, I, I agree with you. I, yeah, I think we could kind of make people. A, yeah, I don't want it to be a Debbie Downer type of program. No, we don't want and that. I don't downer. want to mention names. I don't want to mention names. I don't want to mention companies, and I don't want to bash anybody. It's, 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 I think we should, we need to get some kind of consumer reports. And I think if there's really something bad, I agree for not right now, we're not going to mention any names because we don't get sued. Now, if somebody wants to come on and tell their personal story, 
that's that's yeah, a different. Yeah. And say we're not backing this up. We're just we're we're not yeah. mentioning any names. Yeah. You well, can what, mention names. It's up to you. The, uh, what's the disclaimer? Uh, uh, the, the views of our of our of the the views of our uh, followers are not the views of uh, of. Um, of the show um, uh, uh, Weekly Scam. <laughs> Here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to set up two blabs. I'm going to set up one blab like at 8, 8.45 my time, 15 minutes, and come up and say, hey, I just want to say this is we're, we're changing something. We have another blab today, and it'll be our blab at 9. Because I do this every day. I want to make sure people know that I'm there. So. <clears throat> And two, just uh, one one more minute here, and I, I, I sent the message in there. Do you see when you tweet out? You can put in a message and you can and you can send the link. Let me tweet. And and it was only I letting me that. it was only letting me tweet out once. I was trying to tweet out the new titles, so I think you get one tweet per blab. I don't know. I've been tweeting, I think. Let me try. <laughs> was, it, it. was it all out of the same account? I just did No, it didn't tweet. You're right. It only tweeted then, once. That's good. Yeah, and then I'm thinking, well, if you were, you were the host. So maybe. No, wait, no, no, I just tweeted it out. Let me make you the host real fast. See what happens. So you might. Um, L- let me let you tweet and see what happens. I just right. made you the host. Okay. Let's see. Let me go in there. I'm going to tweet. Hey, you and I are learning so much with this platform. Well, this, I mean, I just saw this today. Um, hey, I'm going to have the, uh, my goal is by Sunday night is to have the uh, $5 blab course out. I think I'm going to just call it the $5 blab course. All right, let's see. Hey, the other thing too, I'm doing. I'm um, I'm starting no, my I'm own. Not seeing it. There it goes. Oh, there it is. Okay, so what we learned here is as a as an adv- as a as a viewer, you can only tweet out once. As a host, you can tweet out as much as you want. Yeah, let me give you some. You look really sad with just one. <laughs> we got to get you at least two. I get get and, me to seven get me to seven hundred and you to two hundred. And then now you can because you know when you send it out to Facebook, you can add some context, you can add a title, you can you know you can sweeten it. But on Twitter, so now on Twitter you can uh, you can spruce it up a little bit. Hey, we blab out our guests, don't we? You see my guests, I blab out. I try to get as much as I can from them. Thank you, I really appreciate Jonathan. It's really nice to see his background doing in real estate. Uh huh. It gives you hope that it can be done. I, I first should probably go get my license here. I'm licensed just like 20 minutes up the road in California as a broker. In the but I get into the high mountains, you know. So all right. So tomorrow at noon, which is fine, because um, yeah, come today- on two minutes early. I'm gonna have two feeds. I want to come on our test our my this feed and then the next feed. And I'd say- like to try to keep it to yeah 30 minutes. Um, it, it, no, it- no, no, no. The podcast has to stay 25 minutes. Okay, well, I'm saying, all right, so at least 30 minutes. I overall. think we should blab for at least 35 minutes after one hour. An hour? Okay. I, I, I think well, we should blab. After I, I was going to say, it depends on, you know, if we got a good audience, have at it. But if we can, close, we can hang up if we don't have an audience, but I started changing the names. Also, I need to change the name back. Remind me to change the name back. Give me up to. Uh, Give me up to 700 oh, real fast. Stop, I stopped well, doing you're doing that. I'm going to change the name back. So I, I got to find out some people can hold that thing and it just moves on lightning speed. And I've, I've not found out what that well, was. Let's see if I'm going to try a new. I, I've never tried that before. Because I have to keep clicking. If I just hold it, it goes like two or three and then stops. But I've seen people where that thing is just. Yeah, we need to figure out how to do that. I'm hitting it really fast now. With a. All right. I got to jump over because I got to go on a Google Hangout and I got to make sure everything's working. Okay. Thanks, Mike. All right. I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, bye. Well, folks, that's another day of the, this is the timelinesofsuccess.com. And also you can go over to mail-right.com. That's Jonathan's show. And this was the uh, Mail Right Real Estate Show, which I, I hope we eventually get it just the real estate agent show or something like that. So let me um, change the topic back to where we were as I close out here. And we want to thank everybody for uh, this long, long, long blab, which is, we really learned a lot. So we're back to the original title. Did it come back? No, I, did. I screwed up there. Got to go to topic, space, space and paste. You got to put a space in there, I think. Let me try it without the space, see if it, what happens. It worked. It worked. So there we are. Um, we're all done. And we thank everybody for tuning in. We've got our, our secret person out there checking in. And Mike, you're still up, I see. So aloha.